Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there hunters, now really quick before I begin, I do want to point out this is not like a hit piece nor is it to be taken as like a super negative fashion. Criticism is always valid and some people just don't like to hear anything but positives, but that's not me. So I did very much enjoy my time with Stories 2, as did pretty much everyone else. I mean I put about 250 hours into the game between the Switch and the PC versions and I don't regret a moment of it. It's a great game, it's a huge step up compared to Stories 1, and like who doesn't love it? However, we can all see that the viewership and engagement for Stories 2 is pretty much down there with Rise at this point, point. and while World is actually on the uptick, and that's fine, games can't be engaging forever. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about today is why it had such a huge drop in activity, and what's kind of left with Stories 2 content, what's going on with the future of it, and just some thoughts and hopes for the game to help keep interest up. So yeah, let's just get into that, I guess. So it's no real surprise why most people dropped off Stories 2. While the actual campaign was long and with plenty of side quests to keep people busy, the post-game content was pretty lackluster. Gene farming and Elder Trials were the only thing you could do, and that kind of sufficed for a good while as people were building their teams to finally overcome the Elder Trial boss Fatalis, and the Super version as well. But that wasn't really a difficult task, and most people can actually crush that content in the game with just getting higher levels, because the base stats of Monsties would just grow so high that the game had nothing challenging to throw at you. So once players finished that, there wasn't really anything left to do. PvP was unfortunately plagued by cheaters on both Switch and PC, although Switch a lot more subtly. And co-op in general was pretty scuffed and boring, as the only co-op content to do was gather genes, which involved avoiding all possible fights. Collecting eggs wasn't particularly exciting either, as all the maps were relatively the same layout, and it was nothing more than just run into an egg, grab the egg, and leave. It didn't help the game that a core feature was removed, that being able to control a monsties element so you could in theory make your own actual custom monsties. So that chase was removed and all that was left of the current monsties system was pretty boring stuff. Monsties themselves were nothing more than stat blocks and there was such a lack of diversity in the gene pool that making the best builds was like a cakewalk and all the monsties were pretty much the same. So as more people finished up the campaign and the post-game content, there was no real reason to play anymore, so obviously everyone kind of fell off. Now what some people may be thinking is that, hey, they got a great roadmap full of new monsies and quests, and that's just content to keep people occupied, right? Well, yes and no. The updates aren't really anything special. The deviants are essentially just color reskins of monsters we already have, since they do nothing else but have a stat block which means the only actual difference with these new monsies are that some numbers are slightly higher than before. We don't get a huge amount of new genes either, and while some of them are good, there's nothing really to shake up the meta or to chase in any way. So, I mean, if you want to know more about the Stories 2 meta, like Titus and myself have some videos explaining it, I would recommend checking those out, but ultimately it's pretty boring. The roadmap was also kind of a joke when it was discovered that all the content is just time-gated, all the content is in the game already. The quests, the monsties, the genes, all of it's usable. The only thing left out was the actual model for the new monsties, so you can't use those early. But you can get their eggs, hatch them, use their genes already, any of that stuff all works. All the quests are all available. Because of this, we know all the new genes, all the new stats, all the new monsties, and all the new quests that are going to be in the game. So let me quickly summarize it and just say there's nothing really that Capcom is releasing that's going to make me come back to Stories 2 anytime soon because we do know what all the content is, and none of it's really challenging at all. But that isn't to say that I'm never coming back to Stories 2, there is hope. The modder Fandorus, who made the Stories mod for Monster Hunter World, which is still being updated and features being added by the way, it's amazing, he's making mods for Stories 2, which so far include a custom dungeon called the Spire of Trials, which you can tackle solo or co-op and fight your way through a ton of 2-3 to three monster fights with just some real brutal monster combinations. You can put your team to the test here, and it is far, far harder than any of the content Capcom would ever throw at us, including the event Fatalis. So if you're on PC, you can download and play it if you're looking to get back into Stories 2 for some extra hard fights. Other mods will come out for Stories 2 I'm sure, but I mean who knows when that's going to happen, right? However, we do also have a DLC update for Stories 2 in the future, kind of like a g rank version of the game basically. I don't want to spoil any leaks for that because that's not fun and Capcom already hates my guts. So I just want to point out there that Stories 2 is actually far from over, it's just in a bowl right now. With that, I do want to point out some things that I feel need to be changed to make Stories 2 expansion worth picking up. 
First is that they need to bring back the element changing of Monsies, of course. It was such a great feature and Ryozo took it out because basically only the meta players interacted with it, which is just dumb. Why would you remove a feature that anyone used? They also need to do something about egg collecting and gene farming. Right now it's super boring just running through the same cookie cutter dens, grab the egg, run out, and that's it. I'm not sure what can be done to make that spicier, but anything just so it's not so predictable and boring. And when the most efficient part of playing co-op is just skipping everything, that's not good. I don't know if that came out right, but you get it. So speaking of genes though with the whole egg thing, we need a much bigger gene pool too. It's crazy that water has no attacks that can crit, and dragon has no speed attack at all. Fire and neutral have everything good, and there's no reason to cross elements with your monsies at all. And then lastly, I would like something to make monsters actually unique and not just stat blocks. A gene that's locked to that specific monsty or a passive trait like Pokemon has would do wonders to give some actual identity to monsters. Because as it is, players just need to pick the monsters with the highest star rating. That's it, nothing else really matters. I do hope Stories 2 gets more mods and that the future expansions do something to fix the core issues of the game, but I'm not expecting anything until then. Stories 2 is great, and I know I just talked a lot about what's bad and why I'm not interested really in playing anymore. But that's just kind of how my mind works. I do love the game, and I want more. I just want a reason to play more. Uh, anyways, that's just a small rant on Stories 2 and kind of where it's currently at. And I just wanted to talk about Stories. So yeah, thank you all for watching, and good luck out there, Hunters.